Hello my Soka Universe and welcome to the weekend review for Serie A. Honestly, the best news is I have here 13 different teams hanging from Serie A and I'm wearing a 14th one. So I have a total of 14 Serie A teams, current Serie A teams, because the 15th one is hanging in the cupboard which is Kievo. So yeah, I'm really really happy that this finally feels complete uh, and yeah, my Serie A collection looks really really good at the moment. Although Torino, Genoa, Probably so that those are teams that I definitely, definitely should add because those are classic teams that deserve to be in there. And I'm wearing Parma because they fit right into the uh, one of the main storylines. That a little bit the relegation battle. I said it last week. Um, the relegation battle might actually influence the chase for the top four already, and it did with Parma scoring a very very rare victory uh, against Roma which puts Roma into trouble um, and actually I hate to say it I mean I always say Roma is my second favorite team but at the moment they are one threat for Milan so yeah was not too unhappy about that one Milan though in the big clash uh, disappointed and lost at home to Napoli Inter get a <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it a professional win and oh yeah, all the other favorites won as well. So yeah, I have to say with all these results, I can clearly say goodbye, ciao Scudetto, congratulations Inter, at least this one you win. I still think that Milan will make it first to 20 between the two of them. In any case, let's uh, run through the results. I mean, there was I, that I haven't seen an early 3-2 win on Friday of Lazio against Crotone, I guess because of the Champions League, they wanted to put it early. Um, Atalanta against Spezia. Um, Atalanta was always the better team, turned it on after the half. Pazalic, Pazalic uh, getting the first goal in 53rd. Uh, then two minutes later, Muriel with a really great shot uh, makes it 2 0. And then Pazalic uh, gets a third as, as well. And very late on, a very weird assist with two uh, Spezia players tackling each other, which resulted in an assist for Piccoli, uh, make it 3 1. Um, I actually saw quite some of Benevento against Fiorentina, and it was, this was the uh, Vlahovic uh, game. Ribery played, and I have to say, whenever I see Fiorentina playing with Ribery, uh, actually Fiorentina looks like a cohesive team in many way ways, and this time, yeah, this looked rather con con convincing. In the first half, he scored the hat-trick Vlahovic in the 8th, 26th, and just after halftime, uh, there was not much that could be, uh, that could deny them. Benevento was not there, and Benevento is really a team now. They started bright in the season. I still think there would be a team deserving of staying up and I really would wish it for Pippo. However, they are going downward, trending down, downward. I mean, Yonita gets within 10, 10 minutes. I mean, they really try to get the goals. They quickly get a goal back in the 56, pushing a little bit for uh, getting a second one and then run to counter where Ribari assists Isiric 75th makes a 4 on Fiorentina. Fiorentina gets a rare win as well because for some reason this very talented squad is down there which doesn't make much sense to me and I keep repeating myself on that. Uh, Genoa against Udine 1-1. Uh, Bologna, Musa Perro, uh, really great form. I mean, Sampdoria had in the third, third minute hit the post when the goalkeeper uh, Skorupski, who is actually great for Bologna, yeah. uh, had um, uh, the ball to a Sampdoria player who hits the uh, the post, but then uh, Musa Berro after Palacio assist had heads heads it in. Cagliarella, 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 Cagliarella can uh, equalize in the end in the 37th, but then Musa Berro just plows himself through the Sampdoria midfield, where I have to say I think they had stopped him. But then the ball goes on the back heel of a nearby player on the right in the path of Musa Berro. This was one of the more weird things uh, because he didn't touch the ball much. And then uh, he assists Swanberg to make it 2-1. Uh, and uh, Swanberg, again, initiated by Mus Musabero, makes it 3-1 for Bologna. Very um, good win for Bologna, who are a solid mid-table team at this point. And then Parma against Roma. Roma just played in the Europa League, played actually well. One has, has to say you were expecting, I guess, Parma, they will do something. But very early on, Mihaila makes it 1 0 for Parma, and Parma just would love this. Mintaversa is very well known for keeping everything compact on the back, very well or, or organized, and then hit them on, on the counter attack. And Roma could not deal with that 
uh, very, very well and get a real loss against a lower level team. Um, Hernani scoring a penalty then uh, in the 55th, that sealed the deal. There was really not much coming from Roma, which was on one side this day disappointing, but yeah. Um, and what's more average, I say Roma, still not playing with the best team. You don't have Zaniolo. Uh, I know that Fonseca in a crazy town like Rome, uh, Rome will be under pressure. I still keep that coach. He's doing an amazing job and he actually might win the Europa League. Uh, for some reason, I trust Roma more in that than Milan. Let's see where, <laughs> how this will, will, will develop. Torino had Inter wonderfully at bay. Uh, for most of the time, Torino had Inter under, under control. Even should have take, taken the lead, uh, a free header on the inside of, of, the, of the pot when he, everything is free there. Uh, in, in, in first of all. So Torino should have even been up. And remember, Torino had a 2-0 lead in Milan uh, in the first game there. He managed to lose as, as well. And they imploded them by themselves uh, uh, here again because <clears throat> Izzo. Lotaro has the ball with the back to the goal inside the box and Izzo comes storming in. There is no danger of all Vobotero just plows him down. Absolutely non necessary. And Lukaku gets a penalty and gets a goal uh, where he was an absolute no shot during the game. And of course, interplaying with those jerseys. Um, then Hakimi could have made it 2-0, uh, but uh, in a crazy sequence, I think the first corner for, 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 for Torino ends up with four Inter players lying on the ground. I think two of them collided within each other. The other one, there was a Torino player pushed into um, Barella. Maybe there was a little bit pushed then uh, to clear the way for Sanabra, but a very light one on Skrinja. I think the goal rightfully stood and it was 1-1. And I was actually really hoping that Torino pulls this out because this would have been another one of those where the um, team on the bottom actually gets a little bit from the team on the top and maybe keeps Milan a little bit in the title race, although I was already afraid of the ev ev evening game. I didn't think that Milan will win that one. Alexis Sanchez comes on and he doesn't come on as a striker. He comes on as a number 10 and he does what a number 10 does really nicely assist Lautaro Martinez who with a great header and he was the best man for Inter definitely great header puts it right in, in the corner 2-1 Inter and yeah they get another win of course for Torino Belotti was not playing or recovering from a uh, corona um, infection whatever you want to call it he had corona let's put it that way we all we all know someone who had corona at this point uh, in the year yeah has been a year has been a year, at least here uh, in Italy, has been even more than that. Um, we have to talk about Ronaldo, he was under severe criticism, even from me, uh, where I said he should involve. I never said that he's the reason why Juventus lost. I mean, the, many people go a little, little bit too far, but you know, yes, he was a kind of the missing piece to deliver the Champions League, which did not happen, and now uh, the whole team is going another direction. In any case, a lot of criticism, and he answered the criticism with a hat-trick. Uh, in typical Ronaldo fashion, a hat-trick and a yellow card, that could have been a red, but I, th I think the yellow yeah, yeah, was right. First one, Cuadrado corner, uh, across, I mean, it's always Cuadrado, and Ronaldo heads it in, and that sets Juve on, on, on the way. Um, he has a high foot try, tries to go ball, the goalie come, come, comes out and hits him here with the uh, uh, foot. I think a different referee might have given him a red card. I just think that the yellow, because the goal is also charging out, so I think the yellow was the correct call there. Um, but then a penalty is given, uh, which Ronaldo con converts, and then Chiesa also assists him to a hat trick. And now he is really past Pele's uh, official goal tally. And of course, uh, Pele congratulated him, and he also made a big Instagram post uh, and saying how much it means to him. Blah 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 blah. I don't like these totals. Uh, whatever, it doesn't mean much. Simeone pulls one back, and then Milan Napoli. You saw me a little bit if you watched my Bundesliga video. Uh, the first 10, 10 minutes of the second half, I was still recording, kind of. And of course, I missed the goal. I have to say, it was not a great Milan showing. And again, uh, so many changes in the lineup. Uh, that's a little bit um, what I'm missing at the moment is that Milan doesn't have a solid lineup. So sometimes they have a great 
uh, performance and then they need to change out a few players or some players come, come back and the whole disrupts a little bit the rhythm. Uh, Kier couldn't play so Gavi came, came in and so in defense was already shaky and the Napoli team really having a week to prepare. Gattuso probably a little, I'm not, I'm not sure if he's really sorry about his exit in Milan because he stepped down but you know he was under pressure there so he wanted to prove himself. Chalanogl coming back which would not be that bad but I have to say it just didn't look all that right and then uh, I mean I think you should have played Krunic in the Chalanogl role, uh, keep, keep it away and then uh, let Sala make us play uh, as well. Um, yeah, resting play. It, it just did not really work out that well. Let, 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 let's put it that way. They had a few chances early on, but then you could see Napoli uh, played it calmly, play, play well. And uh, Milan, the little I saw, came out storming in the first, in, in, in the second half. But then first Kaka contact when Zini plays it to Paul Politano and it's 1-0. And the shot, ah, Zielinski. And the shot that Politano takes uh, is with his weaker right foot and it's like a chip uh, on, uh, like a chip putt. Uh, really weird. I at, at first thought uh, Donnarumma needs to do better with that because he is not covering the corner. But I think the shot was really taken on purpose quite, quite well. Um, Zielinski had then one where I probably could have made it 2-0. There were a few chances for, for Milan. I mean, Leao, uh, the ball falls right to his foot. I think he should have gotten a little bit more tension behind the shot. Uh, same thing, uh, a Tonali free free kick that hits Rebic's head. Yeah, Rebic also could have come on a little bit sooner. So, I have to say, I'm not happy with the lineup, I'm not happy with the performance, but I was a little bit afraid because you had the big game at Old Trafford where you played well, you played well at uh, Hellas, now you have to kind of prepare for the next one and it becomes a little bit messy because the squad is big. Uh, but it is not settled and I think this is where I'm a little bit worried and with that loss I think Milan is not gonna win the title this season nor for the men is any other team because look at the standings Inter nine points clear yes Juve has a game ahead against Napoli let's give them those three points then uh, it is seven points still a whole lot to catch up to but yeah Juve has a slightly bigger chance. Uh, it's now for Milan a top four challenge, which they're still sitting comfortably, especially with Roma dro dropping points. I also, Napoli, I would not really trust. Atalanta though is, has me a little bit scared. I could well see that Milan might finish fourth this season. Um, being conservative at that moment, I still think they will make top four, which they would have would actually deserve after this season. But let's see how it plays out. And hey, maybe they win the Europa League, but I told you already that I don't really trust that either. So yeah, the top four uh, challenge is quite um, open, one has to say. I mean, Milan at 56 to Lazio 46 is 10 points. Lazio maybe drop, drop off a little bit, but you know, Roma for sure. Uh, is still in the race. It's only six points. And similarly exciting, it's on the bottom of the of the table. Uh, Parma with that win didn't help all that much. Uh, but you know, it's just it's not seventy three percent. So you have you're living for another day. Cagliari moving uh, uh, moving uh, still uh, out, but you know Torino has two games in hand, so that also uh, will probably uh, mean that Tor Torino will go ahead, Benevento now really falling down and Spezia also, they're not picking up other points, Fiorentina getting a little bit into safety, uh, which honestly Fiorentina is a team that should be in there. Um, with all the games hand here, here are, are the adjusting standings and the only real chance is that Juve goes ahead of Milan, but if you look at the bottom, Torino and Cagliari are basically neck to neck uh, with that one. And as for the expected standings, Torino will is still expected to finish two points ahead of Cagliari, but it's a rather, rather tight race. Uh, Spezia might still be fine, as is Genoa. However, Benevento, Torino, Cagliari, Parma, those are the two, the um, four for two spots in Serie A. So yeah, and on top, as I said before, it is probably the top four look okay, but Napoli, my challenge, Roma, it's not a done deal yet. Um, in the midweek, we have a playing game between Torino and Sassuolo. That was a makeup game from just um, 
a few week, a uh, couple of weeks ago. So uh, that can happen now since Torino has not um, COVID troubles again. Um, and then next weekend, again, a big uh, name invo game involving Napoli, Roma Napoli. Remember, the first game was the first one where they wore these jerseys uh, because that was the weekend after Diego Maradona died. Inter Sassuolo was back then a great game. This time, I just hope they can trip them up. I think Hellas against Atalanta is one of those sleeper games that you might want to watch. Uh, Sampdoria Torino as well, although this time, since Torino has, has midweek game, I would uh, expect Sampdoria to, to, to do something. Parma Genoa, I think that's also a big one that Parma desperately needs to win um, as is Spezia against Cagliari. So there's a lot of uh, ball bottom of the table stuff. Milan has to play at Fiorentina. Uh, never an easy game, um, but you know. Sometimes they do well against Fiorentina, but it's again on the back of a game against Manchester United, which always has me a little bit worried. But that's the last weekend before the international break. Yes, that's coming up as well. So yeah, let me know what you thought about the games in Serie A. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Um, please comment on my background. I'm so happy with that one. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye!